For many students, the transition from elementary school to middle school can be daunting. For students with disabilities, this transition can be even more challenging. However, with the right support, these students can learn to navigate crowded hallways, meet the demands of challenging coursework, and thrive within a general education setting. Meet Dea, a seventh grade student at Robinson Secondary School. Dea has an infectious laugh, a keen intellect, and loves to email her friends. Oh, and she's blind. But this doesn't hold her back. With support from specialists, Dea attends general education classes. This inclusion not only benefits her socially and emotionally, but an inclusive classroom benefits her classmates and general education teachers too. On gold days, Dea's morning begins in math class. She receives support from Andrea Dunn, who is a teacher of the visually impaired. Basically the support that Daya needs during math is sometimes repeating the problem. It takes her a little bit of time to unload her paper, load it back up again. She listens to the teacher, she raises her hand when he asks a question. Um, so it's her responsibility to follow along with the lecture. Um, and then I'm just there to help troubleshoot the Braille because there is a separate Braille math code that can be a little tricky sometimes. She uses the Braille typewriter um, to take her notes and to work out the problems. And she also uses a Braille note Apex for her, her calculator. Um, so any calculations that she does, she uses her Braille note Apex to do that. Her teacher provides me with all of his notes ahead of time, which is really important for her because it takes time to Braille them on my end, um, especially if there are any tactile uh, graphs or pictures, diagrams. I think it might be 5x plus 5. In this class there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer, um, working groups and that's really great. It's great practice for Dea to explain her needs to her classmates um, and it's also great for her to uh, work with someone her own age instead of always working with an adult teacher. Uh, so she gets a chance to socialize and talk with her peers and also work through the problems with her classmates. After math class, Dea is off to meet with Andrea to learn new technology skills with her Braille Apex Note, which is similar to a computer tablet. Ms. Dunn is my vision teacher, um, and she's really nice, she's really easy to work with, and I actually knew her before um, she became my vision teacher. Lately we've been working on technology, um, like how to, um, like I've, I've been memorizing the keyboard on a laptop, um, and I've also started learning my signature. I, I don't know how to do that yet, I admit, my signature, so we're working on that. Oh, and printing and other basic skills. Imperialism. Slide one, reasons for expansion, slide two. The Braille Note Apex is set up just like a regular computer. If the teacher says, get out a piece of paper and write this down, she takes out her Apex and she'll create a document, type it up in Braille, um, review it, edit it, and then she can print off in print for the teacher and turn it in. She can also email the document to her teacher as an attachment if she's working on homework at home. Um, and she can also um, emboss it into hard copy braille if she wants her own copy of it. Lunchtime provides Daya an opportunity to catch up with friends. Daya says she could have attended her local middle school, but coming to Robinson provides many more opportunities. There were a lot of like school advantages, like educational, for example, the, the time in between classes is 10 minutes and at my local middle school it's only like four minutes. Socially, there are other vision kids here, so like I could have vision friends, you know, people who can relate to me. But I also have regular sighted friends in my classes, so it's like a double deal <laughs> in a way. Seventh grade assistant principal Scott Bergquist says an inclusive classroom benefits both the general education teachers and students. At first, the gen ed teachers may be a little apprehensive to have a visually impaired or blind student in the classroom, but they receive support from the specialists. They get a lot of hands-on or uh, I probably like tips and, and shortcuts what to do by the teachers that um, you know work in the vision program. They come in, sit with the students, help the teacher uh, figure out strategies to work with them. English teacher Linny Vessel says having a student like Dea is a new experience, but she likes the learning opportunity this provides for her and the class. 
I was afraid, am I going to be able to get the materials to her fast enough, to her teacher, to turn into Braille? Because I like to do lots of different things and I change my mind. Actually, the technology part so far has been a lot easier than I thought it would be. I think my best accommodation is that I'm aware that they cannot see. I said to the kids, I said, look guys, I said, I said, this is cool. I have never had a completely blind person in my classroom. You know, so let's use this. You know, I want to learn everything. It's this learning and sharing in Linny's English class that offers rich discussion and thoughtful insights for Dea and her sighted peers. For example, Dea shares her story with classmates about how she lost her eyesight in infancy. I was born eight weeks early, premature. The problem was they gave me too much oxygen and um, too much oxygen. So it detached my retinas, which is in the back of your eye. And didn't you say to me, in Indonesia, they didn't have the technology at the time? Yeah. If they found out that this was happening earlier than they did, they would have, I would have been able to see, or at least be better, like my vision would be better. They only realized after they took me home. That's a wonderful story. Does anybody have a comment about that story? It's really inspiring because she, we just, listen to her tell this story and she didn't even seem like altered by it at all and like because she said she could have had vision and it like it surprises me that she's not more angry that the doctors messed up or something she just accepts it and then she like goes on what well, well, she can so it really just makes me say like well if she's okay with that then what are my problems very, very well said. I think Robinson overall for students uh, with special needs, student body, faculty, very accepting of the students and they just uh, make their way around the building. Students see them, accept them for who they are and um, creates a nice diverse student population. And according to Dea's mom, Inda, being part of this diverse student population is a good reason for Dea to be at Robinson. At first, I feel worried because, you know, this is the first time I have dropped her off uh, uh, within the school uh, area, and then uh, I don't know that she improved a lot with navigating herself, you know, to, to here and there. And then I was trying to be next to her as close as I can, and then meanwhile, she's trying to get rid of me. <laughs> so it's kind of like... A, shocking to me but also in, in other way it's giving me a, a, a warm feeling you know that oh okay now she's fine you know she is she can do her own things you know in this big school sooner or later she has to be on her own and then to be able to this to be in the same um, uh, equally the same with other uh, students um, to me that is important because she can do many things, she can do a lot of things. She can get the grade also the same with other students. I mean, it just there is no limitations, right? To be able to sit and uh, to uh, working together with uh, sighted students, to me um, that is the, the most uh, important thing for her so that she can have her own normal life. It's clear that Dea is thriving at Robinson, from navigating the hallways to participating in class with sighted classmates. The support she receives allows her to be a regular student. I should do everything the other kids are doing, like don't ever give me a free pass on anything. Um, and actually that happened recently. We took a test and I didn't have it and my teacher was just like, okay, you can just read. But I don't want that happening. I think with Dea, it's important that we have high expectations of her because she has high expectations of herself. Um, and she doesn't want to get a pass in order to skate by or to miss an assignment. Um, she can do the assignment just as her peers do. Um, and so it's important to hold her to those expectations because she wants to be um, held accountable as well. The important thing for Daya with inclusion too is self-advocacy and for her to advocate for her needs. As a teacher of the visually impaired, I'm not going to follow her to college. So my role is to prepare her for when she is independent and on her own, whether it be in college or on the job. Um, she needs to be able to communicate with people what her needs are and how they can best meet them and help her. 
As the last bell rings and Dea makes her way to the bus, she talks about her experience here at Robinson. Being here at Robinson is cool because it's a mix of both Persian and sighted kids. So I can hang out with normal, like general ed people and, and my fellow vision friends. And it's also cool because the teachers are really great and the sec um, it's a secondary school. So I can, I don't have to graduate. I don't have to go anywhere once I get to high school. I can just stay here. As big as this school is, the kids here are very accommodating and we take care of each other and they look out for me and I look out for them and we help each other. Helping each other. It's a simple but powerful message. An inclusive classroom provides all students, regardless of disability, an opportunity to learn, share and grow from one another and perhaps help them realize they're more similar than different.